Good evening. How many of you glad to be saved tonight? Now, Brother Van asked us to do something this morning. He asked us to say, even so, come Lord Jesus. Now, how many of you were looking up when you said it this morning? I was looking up. I was hoping he'd come. But now you got to deal with me preaching, amen? But no, I'm looking forward to the Lord coming. But I did. I looked up by faith and said, Lord, if you come now, that's, that's wonderful. Because I am. I'm ready for him to take us home. I'm like Brother Van. I'm sick of this world. Pastor, thank you so much for preaching on hell this morning. You know, most liberal preachers, most non-believing preachers will tell you that's a parable. It's not. Uh, Doctor, yep. I've heard those screams. I've heard Dr. Phil Kidd preach on that. And uh, I tell you what, it is a real place, and people are really going there. And Satan has been busy deceiving the multitudes. That's why it's important for you and I, child of God, to warn people. Don't worry about hurting their feelings. If you tell them in love, you're not going to hurt their feelings. Tell them that there's a Savior that loves them, and he died so they don't have to go to that place. Amen. Amen. If you'll open your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, <clears throat> I'm just going to use this as a launching place. <clears throat> Let's look at verse 17. Do you have your place? Say amen if you do. Amen. If you need more time, say, what was me? Amen. The Bible clearly teaches us in Romans chapter 10, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I come to you tonight because I'm nothing. Father, I come to you tonight because we need you. I need you. Lord, this message that you've placed on my heart, this subject matter, Lord, we're living in the days where many people's faith is being shaken. Father, I pray tonight that you would increase our faith. Father, I pray tonight that you will help us to realize that this is not a time to lose hope. This is not a time to quit. Father, this is a time for us to be more steadfast than we've ever been before. Lord, I pray tonight that your word would penetrate our hearts, that the Holy Spirit would have his free will in our midst. We've invited you to be with us already, dear Father. Lord, if you do not show up, this is all in vain, and everything we've done has been a waste of time. But, Father, I invite you, I expect you to show up, because, Lord, this is your word. Father, we need your word. We need it more than we need food. We need it more than we need water. We need you, dear God. Without you, we're miserable. Without you, everything is in vain. Father, I pray tonight that you would use me as your sounding voice, that you would use me as your vessel. Father, I pray that there's someone here this morning or this evening that's not saved, Lord, help them to call upon Christ before it's everlasting too late. Father, stir our hearts. Give us exactly what we need to hear tonight. We ask this in Christ's name for his honor and glory. Amen. Amen. What a blessing it is to have a source where we can find faith. And faith, it's not ours. How many of you realize that? I hear many people talk about my faith, my faith. They're talking about their religion. Uh, but faith is from God. Faith only comes from God and from his word, and that's what the Bible clearly taught here. And as we see that, in order for us to obtain faith, we need to listen. We need to hear. Uh, there's a lot of times we, we listen and we let it come in this ear and we go out that ear, uh, but God expects us to hear his word and allow it to go down into the depths of our heart, our soul. Even the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And it's very important that we hear the word of God, uh, but it's hard to hear it if we're not listening. And if we're not listening to the right thing, we're going to have the wrong kind of understanding. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Not by any other book, not by any other philosophy or religion, but by God's own word. And it's very important that we understand that Jesus Christ is the Word. He is the Word. Amen? And as we think about that, if we want faith, in fact, the one 
man came to the Lord, Lord, I believe, help mine unbelief. And there's many times that we are tempted. There's many times that we are lacking in our faith, and it has to do where we keep our eyesight at. It has to do to what we're listening to, what we're focusing on. How many of you have ever gotten distracted by situations and you felt hopeless? You got distracted by what's taking place. I mean, here's a great example of what's taking place today in this world right now. If we're not careful, we will start listening to the wrong things and we'll lose our hope. We'll lose that source of faith. Now, thank God when we're saved, Jesus Christ is forever with us. Hallelujah. He comes and lives in our heart. Amen. And so we understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen as described in Hebrews 11.1. 1. But it also tells us in verse 6, in that great chapter of the heroes of the faith, it tells us without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him, referring to God. And as we think about that, faith comes from the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so we need to understand just how important today in 2020 that the holy word of God is so vitally important to you and I. I hope that there's no shadow of a doubt to any of you that hear my voice and have heard me preach that I believe God's word. Now, that doesn't mean that I always live by it, and that's a shameful admission that I have to make. But I believe from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, this is God's perfectly preserved word that he has given to you and I, that we may have faith and have abundant faith. Amen? Would you turn with me to Luke chapter 5? Luke chapter 5. I would like to speak to you about Peter. Uh, I can relate to Peter because Peter was uh, hot-headed. I would consider him to be hot-headed at times. Uh, many times I believe Peter spoke before he actually thought about what he was saying. And uh, I hope I'm the only one that's been guilty of that here. Uh, I know I'm not. But the thing is, you know, a lot of times we need to think before we say something. And we need to uh, realize that there are consequences to the things that we say. Uh, but here, I believe Peter loved the Lord. I believe Peter uh, would have fought for the Lord to the death, as he said he would. And, of course, we know Peter had some failures, but don't we all? Uh, not to excuse our failures, but to let's have mercy on those that do fail and try to lift them up. Let's try to restore them. But here in this, this chapter, Luke chapter 5, I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. It says, And it came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret, that's speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ, and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. Now who's that? That's Peter. Amen. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. Now, from what we can gather here, Jesus, or Peter has not met Jesus yet. But here, Jesus is coming to Peter, Simon. He says, I want your boat. I want to use it. Now, Peter was very cordial. And he allowed his boat, his ship, to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very admirable, is it not? Hey, can I tell you something? The best thing we can ever do is learn to give whatever we have and, and let God use it however he sees fit. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's all his anyways. Amen. And as we think about that, he came and he asked Peter or Simon to thrust out a little. Now, in faith, we all have to have a starting point, and that's called salvation. Salvation is the starting point of our faith. We receive faith when we receive the word of God. When you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's when faith should begin to grow in your life. Amen. Things will change from that point on when you are truly born again. Then you start wanting and desiring to hear more of the word of God. And so he asked him to launch out a little from the land. How many of you have ever been scared to get out in deep water? Be honest. Come on. You know, it was crazy to me. I met people in Navy boot camp that were scared to swim. Think about that. You're going on, more than likely, you're going on a ship. You're going to be in a lot of water, but you're afraid to swim. You may have chosen the wrong military service. 
But here, he launches out a little bit from the shoreline, a seasoned fisherman. This was his profession. And he allows the Lord to have liberty to use his, his ship to teach people. And verse 4, he says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep. Do you see this? And let down your nets. And I believe this is very important that we realize what Jesus said. Let down your nets for a draw. See, we all start out on the shoreline before we get saved. We're on the shore. We're looking. We, and we'll launch out a little bit. We'll start believing a little bit when we start hearing the word of God. But Jesus doesn't want us to stay on the shore. Jesus doesn't want us to continue to wade on the shoreline. One day he's going to ask us to launch out into the deep. And here, what he told Peter, he is telling Peter, you can expect something if you'll do this. Amen. Launch out into the deep. Let out your nets for a draw. What is he saying? He says, you're going to haul in some fish. Amen? He's letting him know, hey, there's a reward if you'll do this. Verse 5. Simon, being the kind gentleman he is, answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. What were they doing? They were fishing. They'd been fishing all night long. Okay? And have taken nothing. What does Peter say? Listen, this is my job. I know where the fish are. Uh, we were out all night long. We're probably not going to catch anything. But look what else he does. He didn't stop there, and I'm glad he didn't. Amen. All right? Nevertheless, look at here. At thy what? At thy word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Jesus was speaking. Peter listened. Faith was increased. Faith is working. Okay? So he launches out into the deep. Nevertheless, at thy word, now here is why I wanted you to pay attention to the verse prior. I will let down what? Why is there not an S on that word? Jesus said nets. Peter said net. Peter wasn't saved yet. Not from what I can gather. He wasn't saved yet. But he yielded to the Lord. He said, I'll do whatever you said. I know these waters. We're probably not going to catch anything anyways, but to appease you, to be a help to you, I'm going to go ahead and go out and let down the net. Okay? How many of you met good people in this world? They'll, they'll give you the shirt off their back, but they still don't know Jesus Christ. There's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of worldly people out there that don't know Christ that act better than some Christians that I, I know. And here, Peter was just trying to be accommodating. First, he let Jesus teach off his boat. Now he's going out fishing for the Lord. And when verse 6, it says, When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Now, if you like fishing, this is an exciting story. Amen? I long to see the day when my net will break because it's so full of fish. And here Jesus told him, hey, let out your nets. You're going to catch a lot of fish. They let out the net, and the net is breaking. All right, do you see that? Verse 7, and they beckoned unto the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to what? Now, how many of you like fishing? Can you imagine? Your boat is so full of fish, and your buddy's boat is so full of fish that it's about to sink. Would you say that was a good fishing day? Would you say you've been blessed? Amen. But can you imagine how he let out both nets or however many nets he had instead of just the one? Now, he let out the one, and not only was he blessed, but the other ship was blessed. So much so that they're about to sink. What a great boatload of mercy and blessings that the Lord pours out upon us when we obey him. When we think about this, look at verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it. Now, I believe that every word of God is in here for a purpose. Okay? When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet. Thank you. It says his knees. Why in the world did he fall down at Jesus' knees? Maybe because the fish were so high that they were up to the knees of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we bow down to God, we should bow down at his feet. Yes or no? That is true humbleness. And I believe Peter got down as low as he could because he saw what God had done. 
he saw the Lord Jesus Christ perform this miracle of the draught of fishes. And he fell down at his knees saying, depart from me. Look at here. I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord. What did Saul call Jesus Christ when he heard his voice on the road to Damascus? What will thou have me to do, Lord? See, before he was a rabbi, before he was a teacher, he was a great prophet. But now that Simon Peter realizes who he really is, he calls him Lord. And that's through the Holy Ghost. We cannot call Jesus Christ Lord if it's not through the Holy Spirit. And as we think about that, he recognizes his own sinful state and he calls Jesus Christ his Lord. For he was astonished, verse 9, for he was astonished at all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. Amen. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. I want you to see the change of profession here. Why did he change his profession? He didn't. The Lord changed his profession. Simon just said, yes, sir. John and James said, yes, sir. They were fishermen too. This was their livelihood. This was the way they made their living. This is the way that they survived in the world. And here comes a man called Christ, called Jesus rather, and he changes everything. But they were willing to follow him because they knew what he had done in their lives. Are you willing to follow Christ tonight? Are you willing to leave behind your nets to follow him and become fishers of men? By the way, you can't be a soul winner unless your soul has been saved. There's a lot to try. There's a lot to think they're soul winning by just telling people, hey, God's good. He is good. But people need to realize that they're sinners that they're already condemned in their sin, that they're already on their way to hell. And as Pastor mentioned this morning, they're but a, de a, a breath from being there except for the mercy of God. And so as we think about that, it says in verse 11, they brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now, a good acronym for faith that I've always used, that I, it's not mine, I didn't come up with it, but I've heard it and I like it, forsaking all, I trust him. That's taking each letter of faith and using it. Forsaking all, I trust him. Peter had no idea where his next paycheck was coming from. But he knew the Lord had done something in his life and that God had called him and he was following him. And it says here at the end of that verse, they forsook all. And followed him. Amen. They had faith. They had faith. Amen. And so it's very important that we understand that. Now if you'll turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 again. And it's amazing to me how many times the Lord spoke to his disciples or used a ship in the disciples' life to teach them about faith. Amen. How many of you remember singing songs about the good ship of Zion? Amen. Think about it. Are you on that ship this morning or this evening? Are you on board with the Lord Jesus Christ? Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Here again, they're, they're, on, they're crossing across the water in the ship, and a storm threatens destruction to the disciples. Jesus, of all things, was asleep on the boat. How could he sleep during a storm? Did he not know what was going on? Have you ever accused God of being asleep or maybe not realizing that uh, you're going through something? Have you ever been there, child of God? You've gotten to the point because you're looking at the winds, you're looking at the lightning, you're looking at thunder, hurricane, tornado, whatever it may be, or that situation in life that you've just now been in, confronted with, and you're saying, God, where are you? Let us remember, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. When we don't see Jesus, it's not because he's not there. It's because we've taken our eyes off of him. And we've looked at the situation. And so he is asleep in the hinder part of the ship. The ship was full of water and about to sink. But it didn't sink. Does anybody know why the ship didn't sink? Because Jesus was on board. Amen. If it's not his will that you're going to die, you're not going to die. Have you come to that point in your life to say, well, 
I'm going to die anyways, but that depends on the Lord. Now, it's easy to say when you're confronted with that word cancer, when you're confronted with a pistol or whatever the case may be, if you're confronted with death, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that death is only a graduation process for you and I that are saved. We're going to a better place. But somehow we lose sight of that when we lose sight of God. Amen? Let's learn to focus our eyes on the Lord. So the ship was about to sink, but it didn't. And the disciples come to the Lord. They're all concerned. And they accuse him of not caring about them. Does he care about them? Hey, does he care about you? How many of you believe that Jesus personally cares about you? I'm not talking about the person next to you. I'm talking about the person you. Christ cares about you. And many times we accuse him of not caring about us because we get in that little self-pity party. And I'm glad none of us ever suffered that self-pity party. Amen? But we do. Then Jesus awakes and he goes out and he says, Peace! Be still. And what happened? The wind ceased. The water was slick as glass, just like that. Why? Because the Creator had spoken. The Creator had commanded the winds and the storm to stop. And there was instant peace in the disciples' lives. Never man spake like this. What a man. Oh, more than a man. He's God. He's God. Amen. And so we see again, on the ship, Jesus was there with them, helping them. Aren't you glad that Jesus is on board with us? Amen. You know, Jesus was on board with Peter when he told him to let out his nets. He was on board with the disciples here when the storm came. But now, the next place we're going in Matthew chapter 14, if you'll turn there, Jesus sends them on the ship by themselves. Now, he was walking physically on the earth. He was not with them in the boat, but he sent them. He told them to go on over to the other side and wait on them. In Mark, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, they obeyed in God's absence. Now, that's the true test of our character. Listen to me well. We can put on a show when the people that we're responsible to are watching us. We can fool people when we know people are watching. But when God tells us to do something and it appears or someone else that has authority if he tells you to do something, you're to do it for them whether they're there or not. Are you listening? We are to obey them that had the authority over us. That's a clear teaching in the Bible. And here Jesus told them, listen, I'm not going to go with you, but you go on over. And they did. They obeyed the Lord even though he wasn't present with them. Once again, turbulent seas. They're getting a little concerned. Things aren't going well. Then, with all that going on, they look out and they think it's a spirit walking across the water and they start to get concerned. How many of you would get concerned? Hello. Well, I wouldn't eat. Quit lying. <laughs> they were concerned. The storm was bad enough and now they're thinking there's some kind of ungodly spirit out there. They're fearing for their lives again, and they start to worry. And Jesus says, hey, it's me. Aren't you glad when Jesus lets us know that he's there, that he's in charge? It didn't catch him by surprise. You know, while they went onto the boat, what did Jesus do? He prayed for them. Hello? Do you know that Christ prays for us? I don't know of any other God that offers to do that. Because there is no other God. But he prayed for his disciples before they even approached the storm. He knew what was going to happen. And he knew that he was going to walk out to them. Now Peter. Now this is between 3 a.m. and 6, 6 a.m. that this is taking place. Do you imagine they were tired? How many of you are tired at 3 a.m. to 6 a.m.? Amen. Don't even talk to my family between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. They, they, well, they don't want to destroy you, but it's just bad. But anybody at that hour, unless you're working, you ought to be in bed asleep. Amen? And here they are. They're worried. They're tired. They're concerned. But Jesus speaks to them. Hey, it's me. Don't worry about it. 
But Peter did something that no other man did. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Now, where was Jesus? He wasn't on boat. He wasn't on the ship yet. He was out in the water. But Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. Now, Peter, who gets ridiculed because he denied the Lord three times, because he, he, he corrected the Lord when the Lord said he was going to die. He says, that's not going to happen, Lord. And, of course, Jesus said, get me behind me, Satan. You know, Peter has a bad rep for opening his mouth and inserting foot. Woe is me. And as we think about it, here he is. He is the only disciple that said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And he's the only disciple that got out of the boat into the tormentuous sea tempestuous sea, and he walks on water. How many of you have done that? I'm not talking about pouring out that glass of water on the cement and doing this. I'm talking about out in the deep. There is no bottom in sight. There's the Lord, and you open your mouth and say, tell me to come to if it's you. And he says, come. He didn't say, no, I was just kidding. He got out of the boat, brothers and sisters. He got out of the boat, and he walked on water until... He looked at the circumstances. How many times are we walking by faith? How many times are we keeping our eyes on the Lord but something distracts us? And then we begin to sink. But Peter knew exactly what to do. Lord, save me. He wasn't talking about salvation of his soul. He was talking about preserving his life. And immediately, are you listening? Immediately. When should we call out the Christ? Immediately. Now, he may or may not deliver us immediately, but the fact of the matter is he never left us. He's never going to forsake us. But from the time that Peter was on the shore, when Simon was cleaning his nets, getting his boat ready for the next fishing day, here comes a man and says, hey, I want to use your ship. Well, okay. Hey, I want to use your nets. Well, it's probably not going to do us any good, but I'll do it anyways. I'll let down one net just to appease you. See, I want you to see that Peter was growing in faith. Peter was growing in faith. And child of God, if we're not growing in faith, we're backsliding. If we're not going forward, if we're not getting stronger in our trust of the Lord and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which comes by his word, which comes by listening to him because he is the word. If we're not growing in faith, we're not okay. Most people will tell you, well, at least I'm not going backwards. Well, if you're not going forward with the Lord, you're actually going backwards because Jesus is moving on. Are you listening to me? Jesus is going forward with his plan, with his will, and it will be accomplished. And whatever God has told you to do, he will finish it in you. Now, you may make it to where it's going to take more time through your unbelief. But God expects us to grow in faith. God expects us to come off of the shoreline, wade out a little into the water. really not really man he's a great hero of the faith is he not do you know he battled the same flesh you and I battle 
You know, he probably had the same doubts you and I had. You know, how many times have we been guilty of telling the Lord his will is not going to happen the way he said it's going to happen? I'm going to be, I'm going to be crucified. They're going to arrest me and take me. No, not so, Lord. Get thee behind me, Satan. Then, the night before Christ is taken, Peter, so boastful and proud, I'm going to die for you. I don't know what just happened. Even cut off a high priest servant's ear, Malchus. Think about it, trying to defend the Lord. But when Jesus was taken before Pilate, when he was taken before the high priest, when the maid comes up, you're one of them. No, I'm not. You know him. No, I don't. Three times. And the Lord told him this before it happened. Three times he denied the Lord. On the third time, he even cussed. He talked so much like the world that maybe they would have been convinced that he wasn't one of Christ's followers. Are you there, child of God? I hope not. But don't think it can't happen to you. Don't think if the circumstances are just right that you won't try to cover up your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when that cock crew, when that rooster crowed, Peter remembered exactly what Jesus had told him. Don't you know he felt like a scoundrel? Don't you know he felt like he probably lost his salvation? Aren't you glad we can't? I said, aren't you glad we can't lose our salvation? Amen. But he felt like a scoundrel. Then Jesus was crucified. Seems like all hope is lost. Maybe Peter's faith was in vain. In fact, he said, I go fishing. Why? He was discouraged. Wouldn't you be discouraged if your master, who you were following, who called you, who was with you day in and day out, if they took him away and killed him, wouldn't you be disappointed and discouraged? I would. Hello? But then, as they're out fishing, and by the way, he took several disciples, if not all the disciples with him, they're out there fishing with him, having their pity party. We're just going to go back the way things were after they throw their nets in. And then there's somebody on the shore that got a little fire going. Children, you got any fish? The beloved one, I like his name, John, amen. The beloved said, It's Jesus. Now, Peter was naked on the boat. I don't know why. Maybe it was because that's the way fishermen didn't dress during that time or whatever the case may be. But when Peter heard that it was Jesus, and when he saw that it was Jesus, he didn't say, all right, lift up the anchor, hoist the sails, let's go. Oh, no, he jumped in the water, and he swam to shore. But what did he do? What did he do? There was a net full of fish. Are you listening to me? He drove that whole thing to the shore by himself. Do you think he was encouraged when he saw the Lord? Amen. See, in John chapter 21, I absolutely love the fact that Jesus gave Peter opportunity to fix where he had gone wrong. Because he asked him three times. Simon Peter, lovest thou me? How many times did Peter deny him? Three times. Now, each time brought more conviction, no doubt. But aren't you glad that God still talks to us after we failed him? Aren't you glad that Jesus doesn't say, well, that's it, you scoundrel, I'm done with you. I'm not going to talk to you ever again. Jesus is all about restoration. Listen to me, because Satan doesn't want you to believe that. Satan wants you to believe you've messed up and there's no hope for you. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Jesus is all about restoring the weaker brethren. Jesus is all about forgiveness. Now, he's a righteous judge, and he will judge in righteousness. Don't get me wrong. But at the moment, he is still full of grace and mercy, and he's long-suffering. And he is reaching out to whosoever will. Child of God, you may have gotten away from him. Let faith bring you back. You say, how can faith bring you back? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Let the word of God work in your life again. Did you realize that when we are in sin, we shun the Bible? 
We're less likely to read the Bible when we have sin in our life. But did you realize that when you're steadily in the Word of God, you sin less? Hello? Amen. We're not sinless, but we should sin less. Amen. And as you think about that, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. See, I believe Peter pleased the Lord. Now, he had failures. He did, but aren't you glad the Bible didn't cover that up? Aren't you glad the Bible didn't paint us a picture of a perfect Peter? Because the only one that's perfect is Jesus Christ. Amen. But what the Bible did show us is that even though Peter did wrong, even though Peter got ahead of the Lord, even though Peter rebuked the Lord, God still forgave him. God still had a great purpose and plan for his life. Who was the one that preached on the day of Pentecost? It was Peter. What happened? Multitudes were saved. Why? Because Peter had faith. Did you know that faith and obedience go hand in hand? You cannot tell me you have faith. If you do not obey the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot tell me you're a person of faith. If you do not obey what the Bible says. Now yes we all. Disobey the word of God from time to time. But I'm talking about as a habitual. Process in your life. Don't tell me you have faith. And you never obey what the word of God says. Faith. Is not a personal attribute that we have. It comes from God. God gives it to us. Faith is not a religion. Faith is not a group of beliefs. Faith is forsaking everything and following Christ. Faith is allowing God's word to work in your life, to mold you and make you into the image of Christ. And as we grow in faith, we have several small children here tonight. And I, I, I love the fact that God lets us come from this helpless, tiny baby. Allows us to grow into whatever we grow into. But you know, when we see a, a young child that doesn't grow, when we see a young child that uh, may, they maybe have years on them, but they still like they're two years old, and maybe now they're seven or eight, but they still look like they're two years old, do we get concerned about that child? They never put on weight, they never grow, they, they, they don't walk yet. Would you not get concerned about that child that should be doing those things? Well, it's the same thing about a child of God. We may say that we got saved years and years ago, but if we have a wrong faith, there's something wrong. Amen. There's something not right, and we need to get it checked out. Well, let's go to the great physician and let him point it out. And Christ will point out what is wrong in our life. And a lot of times it's because of disobeying what we know to do. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him, it is sin. Amen. James 4, 17. As we think about that, we're not under the law. But that does not do away with obeying Christ. If you love me, keep my commandments. Yes or no? Yes. Peter loved the Lord. Amen. Peter made mistakes, but Peter got right with the Lord. Where are you at tonight? Are you on the shore waiting to get on the ship of Zion? You need to get saved tonight. Amen? Maybe you're on the shore with one foot in the water. Jesus has asked you to launch out a little bit. Good. If that's where he wants you to be at, you're in the right place. But maybe he wanted you out in the deep because you're still hanging out at the shore. Yep. You need to wait out to where Christ is at. Don't worry about the water. Don't worry about the depth. Don't worry about tomorrow. He's got all that under control. Amen. He just wants you to be with him. And faith, just to give us a real quick recap, faith is what saves you. For by grace we say through faith, not of yourselves, that it gives to God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? Faith will bless you. Obedience to God blessed Simon when he let out the net, even though it wasn't nets, he was still blessed. 
It will give you safety and security. Peace. Be still. Amen? Did you know that Christ is the only one that can give us calm in the middle of the storm? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Faith will bring you back from discouragement and failure. Jesus said faith can move mountains. Faith as the grain of a mustard seed. How many of you have ever seen the mustard seed? seen any move, mountains move on my behalf. Have you ever tried? Yes. You can say under this sycamine tree, remove and be cast into the water if you have faith. Where's your faith at tonight? How much faith do you have tonight? Do you have faith? If you want it, here's the source. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this evening. Lord, thank you for your word. Father, I need more faith. Lord, as I look back over my life, I feel that there's times that I may have had more faith earlier than what I do now. But Lord, I don't want to be that way. Father, I want to have great faith. Father, I want to have faith that pleases you. And I realize, Lord, that it all comes down to, am I willing to obey you? It all comes down to whether I will allow you to work in my life or not. Father, help me to make right decisions. Father, continue to guide my steps. Lord, I pray for all my brothers and sisters here tonight, those that are listening. Father, I don't know where each and every person is, but you do. Father, they may be in the middle of a tempest right now. They may be feeling like the water is over their head and they're sinking out. Help them to call out to you tonight, Father, to save them to be with them. Give us encouragement, Father. Lord, help us to realize that the things that are taking place in this day and age in our nation, Lord, we're, we're just but a step away from the trumpet blowing. Yes. Oh, Father, we do ask that Christ would come. But, Father, until your wor wor will is accomplished in our lives, until you're ready to blow the trumpet, would you help us to live by faith? Father, as we, we think about these things, the Bible tells us clearly the just shall live by faith. Father, help us to live by your word. Lord, there's a lost world looking at us to see if we're real, to see if we have something that they don't. Father, help us to reflect the light of Christ the way we should. Lord, help us to be steadfast in our faith in you that you have given us, and thank you for it. Lord, please work as you see fit, as only you can. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen.